You know, when I think back about my life, uh, just even three years ago or five years ago or seven years ago, and I reflect on the frenzied pace that I kept for myself, that I had adopted to, had been trained into, had been indoctrinated into, which was a constant influx of emails and uh, uh, dealing with customers and clients and taking care of the things for my business, my personal life, taking care of my children, my marriage, so many things that I was attempting to do, be a church member, uh, be friend, you know, be a friend, be a daughter, be a, a sister, be an aunt, all these different roles and hats that I had been placed upon me, some thrust upon me, some um, lovingly taken up upon my own shoulders and so many things. And it, it's shocking to reflect on that as I now sit, dear wayfarers, I'm speaking to you in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Um, as I sit here, um, and reflect on it and I, I, I the peace that's surrounding me I see the um, golden yarrow and uh, the ivory white yarrow and the lupine and the grasses blooming I see a spring in full blossom in God's country and here I sit enjoying the day at peace sitting in the Father's presence able to soak in what he's speaking at this hour and just to sit in his love you know remain in him I remember I think back so many times when my life was spinning out of control and I couldn't seem to get any answer and at that time I didn't really understand that I had gone into the wilderness quite literally and uh, really my whole life had been in the wilderness and I was completely unaware completely self unaware completely unaware of self have my place in the universe, in the space-time continuum, um, my relation, interpersonal relationships. I was so out of alignment with everything, but I was unaware of it. And so I just, I, I just was sitting here and enjoying time with the Father. And uh, he was, he was saying, you know, Holy Spirit saying, "Look how far you've come." So that's what He's speaking to His bride. Look how far you come as you sit and reflect um, with me in the, in the presence of your Father. Reflect on how far you've come from the person, the personality, the persona, the things that were foisted upon you, the generational curses you were born to break, the projections that have been pushed at you by other people, the rejections, the mistakes, and the things that were catalysts for happenings in your life that for many seasons, you know, you just can't even have any, you don't even have time to look back. And so as I was Sitting here in the love and the presence of the Father, he began to reveal to me how each of those moments led to the taking back of my agency, taking back of my authority, and not by power or might did I do this, but we accomplished this, my, my beloveds, we accomplished this through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has done it in and through us. So from glory to glory, just as the scripture speaks, and as you know, man child's been birthed, the, the new song, the 144,000 are singing the new song. And so as the Holy Spirit was uh, speaking with me and sitting with me and I, I was just enjoying the Father's presence and he was reminding me of a time when I could felt so disconnected from him that I didn't even have time to come sit in nature and just sit and listen and enjoy, enjoy the breeze, enjoy the grasses, enjoy the natural environment of the creation. And so he was using this moment as I had been in service to the uh, to um, Yah for the last few years on a specific project, a specific calling. And if you know, you know, there there is a special someone out there that does know. But of course, I won't go into it all. But it is about taking territory for the kingdom, which all the brothers and sisters are doing. And we are each part of one whole. This 144,000 is part of a whole. And it's part of a whole story. And so as the... Holy Spirit was giving me revelation and understanding about how far we have come from where we doubted the sound of his voice. Were we in alignment? Could we even hear him? Was that him speaking to us? Um, and for me, I want to I uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, in part here. For me, 
my resistance was and 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 doubt came a lot from what the world had projected onto me so what i did not understand was the holy spirit within me when i was really small when i was very young i did understand that it was the great spirit in the sky the heavenly father but by the time i was 11 or 12 the sneaky snake of disney in a story book or or both had kind of uh taken something from my heart which was the fact that the conscience uh, that uh, the movie I speak of I think it's Pinocchio thank you Holy Spirit and there's a little cricket in there and he starts singing to Pinocchio uh, let your conscience be your guide right and so now I had an English phrase or a, a, a word that was being told to me to describe that thing but it now was no longer holy it was no longer for me because of course you need to re- we well we all do understand that we need to. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Scratch that. We all do understand that we we start out here on this planet with the system indoctrinating us from day one. From so from birth to age eight, we get programmed and indoctrinated to fit inside the system norms. And of course, as chosen ones, that will always um, prove that you will be rejected and you will not accept the societal norms when they go outside of what the kingdom practices and principles are. And so Yah's chosen this 144,000, the bride, this group, they, you know who you are. They've been continually um, ostracized, relegated, dismissed, uh, brought up against through threats, everything. And the real truth of it is, is Yah has uncovered it, is that is the Holy Spirit within us, the kingdom of God enters when we enter a room, when we, in, we enter a conversation, when we, the children of the Most High God, Zion, when we enter a room, enter a conversation, enter into a situation, enter into a phone call, enter into an email, enter into any chain or activity of any of any anything in this earth we cause things to move because the kingdom is within us and so this is what from glory to glory actually means that as we begin to have our eyes open to this fully and of course this is just so that as we 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 are children of the most high god and we can never fully understand god he begins to help us to understand one another our relationship and position with him and um, what his plans and purposes are, are over our life and so as i spoke because there had been witchcraft which is a lot of time it will not a lot of times um it is uh, comes from hollywood and it comes from these mismanagement of um no regulation of the truth thank you father god there's no ultimate authority of truth right so disney's allowed to make up their story one nation's allowed to say this another nation everyone's allowed to tell their own tale about history and creation and they really don't get pushed up against except for those who stand in the truth of the most high god yahweh yahushua those that stand in the most stand in the shadow of the most high god and they testify that their god is the most high god and that his laws reign supreme and that jesus christ is lord above all it's the name above all names yeshua hamashiach and so this specific group has been brought to a season of you know, restoration and rejuvenation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, and rest. And rest because it's a race well run. And in in, in this, I bring this gem uh, to you from, from the promised land, a, a beautiful restorative gem, speaking of the discernment to understand how so many of the people in the land remain trapped. And it, the way it was brought to me was this. Recently, we had been... Uh, helping a friend and uh, she lives here in Montana and as you can see from the many pictures that I post on the channel and on my videos is a beautiful natural creation and landscape ecosystem that's been delicately balanced by the Most High God Yahweh and so if you have read any news reports lately or looked into any news from Montana you'll see that there are plenty of reports that lead to the understanding that This state's resources have been mismanaged. There's been lots of chaotic, illegal mismanagement of lands that belong to all. And so the Holy Spirit began to reveal more as to why this has happened, why this has been allowed to happen. And the first reason is because in the interest of greed and money, Many people that owned family lands in this state, great estates, great acreages of farms, have sold them off bit by bit for greed to out-of-town, out-of-state 
buyers that don't live in the state, don't live in the community, don't contribute, usually just visit in the summer for the for the, the months that they find it to be beautiful and tolerable. Although this state is God's country and it is Goshen, preserved for Yah's people, and it is stunning. It's a it's a beautifully balanced ecosystem, but there are cracks in the system, obvious holes. And it's the season. It's the season in the changing of the guard. Where the kingdom of God, where Jesus Christ will rule and reign on earth. And so too, his kings, priests, and judges will take their rightful authority over those regions. And the people of the land will be taught to live under the feasts and the laws of the Most High God. In his great love and compassion and mercy, though there has been much mismanagement in Babylon and Babylon America is under judgment each state in each region so too are the community members who have allowed greed and haven't pushed back as they've watched their neighbors continue to suffer with rising costs of goods simply in place because of the wealthy that have placed land and purchased land in and around here through their own to use as their own personal playground some are the fifth and sixth and seventh homes so around the lake there is uh, much property and there are not a lot of community members and those that are in around this lake around this region of montana and as yah has revealed this is true of the whole state there are faithful and good stewards that remain in the communities, that live in the communities, send their children to school in the communities. And they are believers of Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he is extending a mercy and a grace blessing to them, a curia eleison blessing, just as he's doing for each of the 144,000 and the group that they've been assigned to. So he's described it as that we are an umbrella and that um, provision and blessings and mercy and a chance for a retraining are in order for many of the lives and the individuals that we have touched. And that's in and through the power of the Ruach Adash, the Holy Spirit, as he designed it. It's not by our power. And so as I was looking at the beautiful um, natural state at this park, father reminded me of the manicured lawns in one of the gated communities around the lake where these million dollar homes several million dollar homes and of course these are homes that are belong that, that these individuals that own these homes own five or six or seven homes in many different states some are out of the country even and so these are not even just the only home that an individual owns but they own many and many of them do not even visit the lake at all and so the commerce around the lake and the the living for the the common person living a common wage an average individual is very difficult for them to secure housing it's very difficult for them to secure grocers and groceries and goods because everything the prices are very very elevated because it's in the the, the mountainous north pacific around you know one of the most beautiful lakes in all of north america and so of course yaz people have been put in position to take claim, lay claim, and to take kingdom territory. And of course, that means physical land as well as spiritual. And that means, of course, by prayer. And it's breaking these principalities of darkness. And so, you know, my brother, my sister, that you've been declaring and decreeing, my sisters, and over your regions and your territories and the peoples and the hearts and the minds. And so this is that promise unfolding as the next step happens, as, as Yah begins to put clarity in the minds of individuals and, ex and really teach on living on the land and having Adam's the, the dominion of Adam's race but also the care and responsibility to whom much is given thank you Holy Spirit to, to whom much is given much is required and so as this shift happens and as the uh, the king comes to rule from here on earth despite what the the, the lying churches have said of course he will, he will, his children will be risen up and crowns will be placed on their head. And those that live in these regions that Yah has predetermined will have an opportunity 
to surrender to the Most High God, surrender their hearts as the living witnesses testify in supernatural ways. So, of course, the 144,000 are living witnesses. They are vessels that carry the Ruach HaKadosh. And so just as the Feast of Tabernacles suggests, and if you'll do any reading in the Bible of it, the first Feast of tabernac Tabernacles, the Holy Spirit that was celebrated was at the base of Mount Sinai. And of course, this is also known as Sukkot. And this is, uh, Sukkot, this is a feast that is celebrated. The Israelites would camp in tents and make a memory and, and, and be thankful and grateful for all the things that Yah had taken care of for them in the wilderness, all the provision that he provided. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for their, for their long wilderness. He had provided it for every need. And then also is a celebration of the Messianic age to come. And so, okay, so that is this season now. And so they would, uh, it was a feast of tabernacles, and they would celebrate it in a tent because, of course, as the Israelites moved in the wilderness, they, they lived in tents because that's a temporary dwelling place. And of course, so our bodies are the temporary dwelling place of our eternal soul. We are not our bodies, as you know. And so we are that tabernacle. As we carry the Holy Spirit, we are the tabernacle that's been coming into these environments with different individuals and peoples in this last, these last days, these situations, in preparation for the Most, most High to, to come with a visitation for them. And so, hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. As I was helping this individual um, do a lot of gardening, there was a lot of uh, gardening to the front of her home, a lot of buying of plants, a lot of digging and cutting and moving rocks. This particular home is in a bay here in Montana, this beautiful bay that is really a riverbed. It's a, uh, it's uh, this is glacier water, Arctic glacier, glacier waters, and there's a dam at both ends. But of course, it's not a nutrient rich water where there's a lot of fish unless you go out really really deep and so but it's a a beautiful natural resource the uh lots of living grasses and natural ecosystems around and wildlife many geese and deer and bear and just every manner and type of bird and uh, beautiful flowers and so in the but even in and also so too not but but even also so too in the riverbed section so a lot of natural beauty but of course in these neighborhoods these gated neighborhoods the terrain is of course completely ripped up and there's manicured lawns and forcing of um, plants that really they've tried to breed or hybrid to force these certain type of flowers to grow here in Montana and, and a rejection maybe of the natural flowers and the natural um, beauty and ecosystem. Of, and, and so there, there's a favor there or a favor here on all around the lake in the homes and regions to have a lawn, mowings, clippings, and plants brought in from outside. So not a natural habitat as you can see from the picture with the natural grasses and things. And so of course this causes a lot of issues for the wildlife because there's still wildlife in these communities and so the deer are having it make it it's difficult for them to go down and drink in the waterways because there's harbors and docks everywhere and that ends up with standing water. They, because it has rained so much here in Montana recently, these regions are holding water because they've, they've moved rock from one end of their neighborhood to the other and they have the wrong type of plants and root systems because they're bringing outside things. So it's opposed to the natural order of the way Yah designed for the vegetation, the Holy Spirit, and the bi biology and ecosystem of Montana. So it's with, and it's to, the function of it is simply to please a certain aesthetic that is, I would say, um, Californianized or maybe one that's uh, definitely what you would call a manicured lawn. I lived for 30 years, thank you, Holy Spirit, in the Garden State in Augusta, Georgia, and they are also preferable there to have these very manicured lawns where everything's neat as a tick. There's, and, and I've noticed an uptick recently, hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ, for uh, more sustainable land management and for, uh, for natural resources not to be cut down or bush hog and so this and I'm very grateful because that's that that's the the releasing of the Holy Spirit for wisdom the spirit of wisdom being released um, in this Kyrie Elison blessing where he's 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 using the blessing and extending it this blessing that he's given to his, his to these families he's extending it and there's an umbrella and so by that knowledge being available because this is old world knowledge and of the of, of because we're the people of the book don't forget children of the most high God were the people of the book 
So he is bringing his children back to the old world knowledge of, and, and bringing them back into alignment of how his creation is to coexist with the animals, with the plants, and with the things. And, and we have dominion. That does not mean that, that we are to take God's creation and mow it down and craft it and, and make it fit inside a box of how we think it should look in any such region because we are also have bees and birds and other things that support the entire ecosystem that have been pushed out and won't pollinate with certain plants because they've hybridized them so the deer won't eat them because the deer do eat them. So I witnessed about $10,000 being spent on a garden with slagstone and grass and every bit of kind of wonder. Everything was dug out. Rocks were moved from one side to the other. Now, don't forget, this is a riverbed, an ancient riverbed. Everything was moved and pushed. I mean, at least $10,000 was spent to kind of get this looking to the style that the, that the woman designed. And money was no object. And of course, within 24 hours, the deer that, that roamed that neighborhood, and there is a quite, quite a large bit, and some geese. This is, don't forget, this is a this is the natural habitat of these animals. They had eaten some of the plants, and so she doubled down. This woman doubled down and ordered more plants that were poisonous to deer. She put those in. the The deer continued to go through the garden, and so now she needed netting and fencing to wrap each one of these plants. Right, and it, I mean, so now this beautiful <laughs> display that had been planted now. Is, has gating and netting all over it and so it ends up that a woodchuck eats some of the plants as well and so at this point the woman is aggravated frustrated it's rained a whole lot the the rocks and the soil that she's brought in is sliding down because don't forget it's a riverbed and so at this point advice is given asked for and given that maybe it's not the best idea to try to force a type of vegetation and ecosystem that's not natural to this area. And it would be better to adopt the natural grasses and flowers and, and styles that the creator had placed here already, which would be natural vegetation, uh, things for the deer to dine on and the ducks. It would help the ecosystem, it would help with everything. It would help balance for the bees and the birds. And also there are apple trees that she does have. And so it would help in all counts. Now, I don't have to tell you, but the idea was completely dismissed and rejected because this individual desires to have everything exactly the way she desires it, as opposed and in rejection of the Most High God and what he has determined is correct type of vegetation and planting in any given region in response to the beast that he has there and the animals, because don't forget, he is the creator of all, right? And so there are many that you can see outright reject the Father, the Heavenly Father. They reject the idea of a creator. They reject, but they will say that they are Christians, but they reject the very simple and common sense approach to living, which is simpler is better. And, and, and as we know, we have a Heavenly Father, so we walk in that, we operate that out. Our Heavenly Father has designed and created this earth to sustain our life and the lives of the animals. We are very important to Him. And so the ecosystem needs to be carefully it's already been, thank you, Holy Spirit, designed to support our life. And so we need to be responsible caretakers of those things, the gifts of the living God. And so what's being uncovered in the earth right now is the those that have been irresponsible with the natural resources, maybe with people, maybe with situations, maybe with positions and roles and organizations and businesses. All of these things are set to come crashing down. And they have. We've experienced it, of course, in the spirit. And we, and that's why this is just such a gem. Because as I sit here and reflect, I think about all the years that I worked. You know, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 120 hours a week. And it was simply because they programmed consumerism into us. And the Holy Spirit had revealed this woman, consumerism had been programmed into her. She continued to spend money at, at you know, just exorbitant amounts. At really money she didn't have. Thank you, Holy Spirit at trying to get this garden to whip it into shape, to whip this earth, to whip this land that she had bought, that it was hers, and that she was going to make it do what she wanted. And of course, here the Most High God resists the proud, and the deer kept eating it, and it got all tore up, and it just looked terrible, right? It just didn't look, didn't look good at all. And so at the end of it, the woman says, well, this was a total waste. 
And I said all that to say this, it, amen, it is a total waste. When anyone is walking and not by the power of the Holy Spirit, when they walk in the flesh, everything's totally wasted. Their life, their spirit, their resources, their finances, their um, gifts and talents, everything is wasted, of course, because you can't be expecting to walk by the flesh and walk with the living God. But of course, this same individual is convinced, 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 convinced that she is walking with. But Yah has given us revelatory knowledge. We understand those who are powered by the Spirit, and we know the season that we're in. And we know that we're what we're called to do in this season, and we know what time it is. We also know that it is a season right now where the Father is asking, are, are you caring for my poor? Are you caring for those in need? Are you helping those? And so we can understand that this this amount of idolatry and, you know, misuse of finances, misuse of funds, and this is, of course, at a micro level because this is one individual, it's reflective as the whole state on a macro level about what they're doing, misusing resources. And this is why Yah is coming in and flipping the script, and he's sending his children to speak the truth. And for, for those who have ears to hear it, and of course, you'll, you'll hear those that will continue to resist and argue and, uh, you know, that's not, you know, let the chips fall where they may. We're past that season where that we, we even, even feel the need to explain or anything like that. We've graduated into rest, restoration, you know, rejuvenation. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We've been restored. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Scratch restoration because we've been restored. Rejuvenation where we watch and see the hand of our Lord move. And as he begins to tear down these constructs and tear down these wrong pillars on a micro level that you'll see in the office, in your business, um, if you're retired or if you're sent out in the land, uh, I'm sent out in the land a lot. I can see so much of it just from organic conversations with other individuals and places that the Holy Spirit's been sending me. Um, and just the, the beautiful reflection of, the, you know, just even up to two or three years ago, four years ago, well, this, I began this adventure three years ago in uh, October. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Up until then, the year before that, I was working, you know, 110 hours a week, and I was so disconnected. I didn't have any time, and I had built this you know, world or construct for myself. And when the Holy Spirit said, come away with me, come to Montana, I want to show you something. Come to the promised land. I'm going to send you as a witness. I'm going to send you as a spy so you can come back out and witness and tell. And he had done so many miracles and, and so much revealing. And one of the most beautiful, beautiful ones was how far we've come. We have come so, so, so far than where we started. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. And we have arrived. And so the, the old constructs, the things that your your heart and your your very core has bucked up against and fought against and just, you know, the things that have caused you the most hurt and the most pain, those very things are where the victory was, of course. Amen. Hallelujah. And now you have dominion where you're at and where you're located and we take it. And we take it by force, right? Remember, since the beginning of time, the kingdom of heaven, you know, suffereth violence and the powerful take it by force, right? Because we are kings, priests, and judges. And this is the set time. This is a set season. And so it's just, it's just been such a delight. It's been a, such a blessing. I thank you, Father God, um, during this, this personal time that I have with the listeners to testify about your goodness, to testify about your miracles, to testify about how not only did you bring me through, you put me on top. It's just been the most glorious time. And I, I'm just so excited for the next season. And I wanted to share this little gem. Oh, well, thank you, Holy Spirit, that, that we are appointed for a time such as this, where you said in your word that since the beginning, the saints of the Most High have desired to live in this time, to see these great comings, to see these things on the earth. And uh, we thank you, Father God, that, that we are living testimonies to your goodness. Living, 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 breathing testimonies to your goodness, living witnesses. Hallelujah, glory to Jesus Christ. We thank you for how far you brought us, Holy Spirit. Um, I thank you, Father God, that the spirit of stagnation is broken off from your troops. And uh, thank you, Holy Spirit. My beloveds, my beloveds, the delight in the Lord. I can feel his heart and he's speaking. He says he's so delighted. He's so delighted. He's waited so long for, for this season for us to come to the full knowledge and understanding of what we carry, to recognize the lessons about, you know, being servants, but not being doormats. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for reminding me of that. As this uh, particular individual that I was helping, I was, uh, you know, uh, 
active, active and operating in a helping role. The Holy Spirit used the situation to really reveal the state of the nation of Babylon, the forcing of people refusing to surrender to the natural order. Right? There is a natural order. And uh, God's kingdom coming to earth is really revealed how many will resist the natural way of things. And in this case, when I, when I spoke to this individual who's an acquaintance, and I would have said friend, and I, I would, uh, of course, extend the olive branch to anyone. But, of course, there was a, an immediate dismissal of what I was saying when I said, you know, what about planting or allowing the earth to come back to its natural state in your yard? And, of course, still to keep the rocks. I understand she wants it to kind of look a certain way. But let, allowing the vegetation to be the natural vegetation that Yah, the Most High God, has designed for this area so that all the animals can live right so there's the waterfowl in this area this is a you know our this is the job of the residents here to protect the wildlife here and of course they are eyeballing montana's fish and wildlife and gianforte and lots of things going on in the state in the pacific northwest and it's a beautiful location but at a micro level neighbors individuals people homeowners here are not doing their part to maintain the natural resources for the wildlife that's here and so they are part of the problem as well but as usual in Babylon there's a lot of finger pointing at other groups and so this woman was highly highly offended and of course when I spoke with the Holy Spirit and as the Holy Spirit began to reveal that this this woman was operating in a lot of witchcraft and uh, narcissism and image projection and she had an image that she was attempting to pro project with the other individuals in the homeowners association and she had been doing that her whole entire life and so right this is the church of thyatira just an image not really the the child of the most high god not really f surrendered fully rejecting it and so there was the, in the scriptures thank you holy spirit the scripture that the father gave was um these people that he describes as having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away he was using this this person as an individual of someone to turn away from you know, who who was very resistant to the obvious signs of Yah speaking in her life. This had gone on for at least three or four weeks, five weeks. And I, I don't laugh at the woman, but I, I, I giggle with the Holy Spirit at the times. It took me so long to catch several signs by the Holy Spirit. of He wanted me moved away from, from what I was doing, the career that I had. I had a lot of people taking advantage, and he wanted to bring me, you know, to freedom, you know. I'm a free woman in Christ, right? We're free women in Christ. And so he wanted me to have my whole agency back. He didn't want me to be the doormat of all these different individuals and, and constructs and ideas and pillars that I had built up in my own life to take advantage of me and to rob me of my agency. He wanted to give me my agency back, teach me how to respect the pearls that he'd given me and not to cast them just among anything. And so this, of course, as you have learned as well, that's a part of the wilderness training and uh, the up, uh, up leveling, right? This is how he's leveled up his children. And so that's how we have began to operate in full dominion. And of course, we're always learning, we're always growing, and uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah. And we know that it's by His grace that we haven't done it of our own, or that we've even had an idea of how it was happening or occurring, and then suddenly it was happening and we were in it. And suddenly I was speaking these truths, right, to this woman, and uh, the, re the, the demonic activity in her face, in her, uh, her physical form, in the way that she was even operating. And this is, this is a person that I've been friendly with, for a while since I've moved here and uh, I had really been oblivious to several of the signs of narcissism and idolatry and witchcraft and vanity and uh, just all the Th Church of Thyatira right signs and of course I had not studied as much as I should but holy glory to Jesus Christ my sister Sabine has our sister Sabine has studied if you haven't checked out Sabine shares uh, just go to Google um, and type in Sabine shares and I'll of course uh, pop a link in the description box if I can. I'm on mobile right now, so I may or may not be able to, but if I forget, if somebody else could do that, put it in the comments. Uh, thank you, brothers and sisters, um, out in the comments. Sabine shares her WordPress. If you haven't checked that out, that's sister, our sister Sabine. A vessel full, full of knowledge, glory. This is the glory of the Lord risen on our sister. And uh, she's done so much uh, work. Beast of Trumpets, uh, the Three Days of Darkness, all these materials that are already prepared and in an ordered fashion, in a beautifully ordered fashion, so concise and just amazing. And so 
because she had studied to show herself approved and she had done the work and because the father had given this uh, a loosed a curie eleison blessing of which uh, Sabine's family and myself are, are we are partakers of this she had studied thank you she had found herself approved she had done the work and she was able to impart to the body I'm part of the body of Christ able to impart to me so that I could understand fully the full season and what was happening and if hallelujah the father revealed to me you know I had stood in my authority and I had we had leveled up so this is for all of us we had leveled up this is like the gold star the top level of this narcissism when Yaz Chon speak the truth outright and these these spirits these Jezebel spirits argue the point so they have a form of godliness this person says they're a Christian they says they're a believer um, but deny the power thereof. Of course, the power of creation, the power of what Yah says in his word about how we're to be good stewards, right? Good stewards do not chop down, cut up, and try to force and manipulate creation to be their liking in their suit, to what suits them uh, for an image as opposed to what Yah desires. And so remember, he's going to bring his children back to a new, clean, green earth. And so everything's going to be handled... Um, very differently than the constructs that now people accept and receive as agreed upon. So of course this whole community all around the lake, many of the people agree on the same thing that all the wild grasses should be cut, uh, just, just artificial plants that are hybridized that deer don't like should be planted and they should all look of a similar style. And of course, so the deer, this, this, this herd of deer, this herd of deer that live in that neighborhood and go all through the vegetation, there's not things for them to eat. There's poisonous plants. I mean, there's not good stewardship up, so stewardship of this land for all the inhabitants. It's only for one grouping, which is of course this Jezebel spirit that wants to change the earth, change the land ownership, change the design and creation of the most high God, which is of course impossible because he is the head and not the tail above and not below the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the great I am. But of course, we are seeing now as the Holy Spirit uh, unveils it, these manipulators, these these wrong users of the resource that's for all, in all levels of government, in all places all over, but especially here in Babylon, we're beginning to see the lies crumble down, the mismanagement, the misuse, even to the lie of the land actually being owned by one group or another. We know as Zion, God is the one that doles out land that's what we know as Yah's children. And so he has left living witnesses alive to testify to his goodness, to testify his holiness, to testify that, yes, this is a season of rejuvenation. This is a season of graduation where you've graduated against the narcissist, right? You speak the truth in love and keep on moving. And if it's a demon talking to you, you know, you don't, you let the chips fall where they may. You don't engage with demons. So, of course, after this situation after I had spoken with this woman and had spoke my part as to the way you know I understand that Yah has shown us in his word and she has called herself a Christian so she and I according to the profession of our faith are called to live in this way right to study all the word and of course this is an individual that that I don't I can't say whether or not she has studied or not but the evidence in the behavior proves not as the resistance and the rejection up to the total truth of what was being spoken in the backup with the scriptures and so this is not the first time that you or I or someone has um, engaged in this way sometimes we're engaging with people that are not believers and so we're having to operate in what with one hat on this particular individual has has made a declaration of faith that says that she does believe in the Lord Jesus Christ but of course it's a different Lord remember much of America worships Lord Baal Baal you know the Satan this is this is we're not we don't speak of the most high God they many people when they call out Lord do not realize that that is Balaam they are not speaking to you excuse me Yeshua HaMashiach they're not speaking to our Lord Jesus Christ they're not speaking to Jesus Christ of Nazareth because they have not made him Lord and Savior of their heart now there are many that may say well how can you say that because you're not supposed to judge others actually the Bible says a righteous man judges all things and he himself is judged by no man because when we receive Jesus Christ we're covered in his righteousness and as his servants he sends us forth in our imperfection he sends us forth in that way and that we know that we're in our imperfection and that we're only made whole and complete by his stripes we're healed and so it's in, it's in humility that we come and we speak the truth because I, when, when, when we as the children of the Most High God, whether we're called to speak to the construct group that are the, the group that are Gentile nations, Gentile groupings of people, 
or if we're called to speak to those that are say they're Israel to uncover whether or not they've received you know Satan is it a Kundalini spirit did you really receive the Holy Spirit and of course I'm called to that group many many times that's the specific group that I'm called to and I've been given dominion over that to help break and bind those spirits so that these children can get in the secret place and really hear from the Most High God and of course this woman was one that resisted any 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 leading of the Holy Spirit as to demonic preachers as to the false prophetess she was speaking listening to there were many signs that the Holy Spirit gave and spoke to me to give to the woman but she continued to refuse these statements and things that the Holy Spirit was giving to her and for the season it was getting quite uncomfortable because these were obvious truths that that all the children of God should have been operating in and I could fully see demonic activity on her face and in her actions and activities and it just even the way that she would be rude and dismissive but I had already decided I was going to put this service you know put this put this this favor this gift that I was doing on the altar for the living God and let it play out right because I was an observer in this the Holy Spirit wanted me to just pay attention and here he here he gives me the deeper understanding and revelation that this is this is that spirit of Athaliah you know right that wants to kill the kings of Judah that wants to argue against this is not even the lukewarm for many for many years I thought I was you know really just speaking to lukewarm but in fact it's the church of Thyatira that's that's exactly who this charge was against and she had resisted everything and then not only that had retaliated and been just kind of had had real ugly attitude um very disrespectful very disingenuous and what the holy spirit revealed to me this is because she had been uncovered she had been uncovered as not not really zion you know had been pushed up against the truth had rubbed up against her and that demonic activity that demon in her did not like it and of course when we idolize our own selves our own ideas or the constructs that that, that and we don't question those you know if we don't go into the secret place and, and and make a friendship with the holy spirit and ask questions if we make it up in our own mind how we think it should be as in the case of this acquaintance that's exactly what will happen that's exactly what happened to this woman the lord will allow the delusion to sit in place because why because people don't love the truth because the truth is presented truth is a person and his name is jesus and so when that truth is presented and individuals reject it they're rejecting the truth which is jesus christ now that is not us judging them and we have no idea what the master will do with any of his servants or any of the people on planet earth but we're speaking the truth and so what has happened is the church of Thyatira has tried to take authority and has tried to argue against the true church of God, 144,000, the bride of Christ, Zion. And that has not working any longer. That's not working any longer because the kingdom has shifted. The kingdom is here now on earth inside Yah's people. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Wherefore, wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will rid you out of their bondage and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments hallelujah that's what he's he's doing brother and sister he's done he's judged the nations and we've been brought out we're no longer caught in the construct we're no longer caught in the wilderness we're no longer caught up in the distractions of in the lies of the system to the point of this woman spent ten thousand dollars to try to keep these deer from eating her stuff they ate it all up and now she's depressed and sad and mad at god and why didn't he tell her and why didn't he help her and she doesn't have money and she's super angry at god but the real truth is he did tell her in and through me I advised her several times and of course Yah revealed to me you know he helps men in and through men and if we refuse to re receive our sisters our brothers the vessels that Yah sends then of course we will we won't receive the blessing we're not gonna receive and of course it really uncovers the character of a person when they refuse and reject a vessel who is there sent to assist there is serving you know is there in that capacity and then not only that, but these individuals, the Thyatira, the church of Thyatira decides also to make them a doormat and reject everything that they say. But this is, of course, a rejection of the truth and it isn't personal. And I'm so grateful for this, this graduation of this season because it can almost feel personal. And Sabine and I were talking about that, you know, the last little bit of washings of these rejections because the Holy Spirit, you know, I had to sit down with the Holy Spirit and not, you know, I know some people talk at him, but, you know, we know how to talk to him. And I was talking with him. I said, Lord... I, I don't know exactly what, what was the resistance here. And the simple resistance was the same that it's always been. The truth, when spoken, will be received in great love and happiness for those that are filled with the spirit of truth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh, so they will rejoice. And those that have not received the spirit of truth 
do not receive the spirit of truth. And the truth is that the Holy Spirit tells us in that case to take your peace and leave that place, right? Take your peace with you. Take your peace from away from that place. Meaning, don't let your mind dwell. Don't let yourself feel rejected or hurt by the inability for someone to receive you. Because just as he told Samuel, Samuel, don't, don't, be, don't have your feelings hurt that Israel wants a king because they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. So in fact, this was, you know, the Holy Spirit within us, this, 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 the, this, the spirit within us is not resonating with these other individuals because it's not the same spirit. And then you have your true tribe, your true tribe and your spirit resonates with them because your vibe attracts your tribe. So in the case of Sabine and I, your vibe attracts your tribe, the 144,000, they're vibrating at this frequency. And so now all these other individuals who were faking, they're just, uh, they can't keep the same vibration. So they just, they, the, Yah just removes them from your life. He uncovers them for exactly what they are. They are those that have a form of godliness, right? She has her Bible out, but denies the power thereof from such churn away. Of course, we follow the commands of our Father. The word is given to help us. The instruction is given for us to walk in close holiness and in relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and the reason why is because we open ourselves up to a lot of demonic attack when we have these uh, uh, relationships with individuals who have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof, as in the case of this acquaintance. Um, even though she is, uh, you know, so has a Bible and says she calls on the name of Jesus, the actions, the words, and her resistance to the truth, all the other things say no. And so we are called to discern correctly, right, to operate in the spirit of truth. And this is not passing judgment, but this is so that you're not dining with the unbeliever. You're not partnering with them. You're not making soul ties with them. And also so that you can bind and loose and pray for the individual. Not for any other reason, but it's a reminder for Zion that we're to keep ourselves consecrated, set apart, and pure. Right, to keep our garments once we're washed, to keep them clean. And so, of course, when we're around unclean ideas, unclean people, the spirit of witchcraft, we don't forget ever that, you know, the children of Belial want to take us down. These demons want to take us down. And so some people can find it offensive when you say, well, this person's a demon. No, these people are allowing their body, their vessel for their soul to be taken over, hijacked, and used by the devil. That's the truth of it. And if that's offensive, well, this has been the sky god's daughter. And I guess if that's offensive, it's going to have to be offensive. I love you, my beloveds. I'm so excited about this next season. And uh, I can't wait to see each and every one of you. Um, well done. Well done, good and faithful servants. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ.